Hi, I'm Chris Brosnahan. I'm the author of Deadlines, which is out now with a pigeonhole. I had my first published work came out last year, uh, which was a novella called POV, which is a sci-fi thriller. Um, I also have written a full-length novel, which hasn't yet been published, but I'm still working on that one, which is a dark, twisted psychological thriller slash horror, uh, which is kind of... Uh, how to describe it? Charles Manson meets Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it's, um, I've also um, wrote a serialised work, which I've taken a hiatus from halfway through, called Magic Falls, which is a fantasy, a, a kind of London-based urban fantasy, uh, which is quite fun. I tend to think that my spiritual home is basically thrillers. Um, I've kind of grown up as a fan of horror, sci-fi, crime, and all of these kind of things. When I was seven years old, I got massively into Sherlock Holmes. And so I kind of grew up with... I know, it was like most seven-year-old... I was, I was equally into Transformers and Sherlock Holmes. I was a very, very strange child. And that, that led to a love of horror, and that led to a, lot, a love of sci-fi and all these things. In the back of my head, for absolutely ages, was this kind of... London-based Watergate scandal idea and it was partially through find, reading up about Watergate all the president's men and all that kind of thing that really picked up on this idea of I've always had this romantic notion of newspapers and journalists and so it was a chance to do something with that and then also and I think by the time this is going out there'll be enough of this that I'm not spoiling anything but it was the idea that events from the past influencing what's going on now and in order to find out what's happened with an event now you're having to uncover bits and pieces of the past that kind of thing really really intrigued me uh, i started writing deadlines uh, just under three years ago and i read that out in sections in the group and so um, there were members of the group who've been hearing bits and pieces of this over the years and have also heard the plot going from beginning to end and I've got a lot of feedback from it and I've also got to see people's reactions which has been a huge amount of fun uh, especially with some of the events that come later in the book. Uh, the writing group started because I'd been asking here if they'd be interested in doing such a thing and if they had something and eventually they said We'll, we'll let you run a writing group if you stop asking for the love of God. And so I, we set it up then, it's been running, we, we've got quite busy, we've had quite a lot of people doing it. There's some fabulously talented people come in each time. Um, but it was also partially at that point in time, I'd been out of work for about a year. I'd spend all my daytime looking for a job, driving myself slowly insane. So the ability to sit with a group of writers, talk about writing, talk about the kind of things that I'm passionate about, that was just, you know, absolutely great. I grew up in a writing household. My mum's a novelist and she started writing when I was very young and she started being published when I was about 20. So I've kind of grown up with that in the household. Uh, I think anyone's influenced by their parents to a certain degree. But I think the main thing, more than anything else, was the idea that seeing that it was possible. You know, I was kind mm -hmm. of growing up with the idea that this was, this wasn't unachievable. I think a lot of people look at writing, they look at books, and they think you have to be X, Y, or Z in order to do this. And I kind of grew up with the idea of somebody that is to me on, on a lot of levels wonderful, on a lot of levels very ordinary, um, has managed to do this. And so it just kind of made it seem plausible and accessible and like something I might actually be able to do. It's massively exciting. Um, you know, we, we got talking because of Magic Falls. So there's this idea I was already doing something serialised. Um, and so when we started talking, I sent across uh, deadlines. And it was really really cool to look at it and go okay could we split this up and it was a realization that it pretty much split into 10 parts i'd unintentionally written it you know, in, in these sections quite nicely uh the idea of what the pigeonhole is doing i think is really really exciting it's this 
it's like watching a TV series. It's like watching Breaking Bad or The Returned or something like that, where you've got a lot of people watching it at the same time, being able to talk about it, um, getting people intrigued slowly until you start hitting them with the real cliffhangers as it goes on. You know, it's this idea of slightly driving people mad in a really entertaining way is just appealing enormously, uh, which is one of the reasons I wanted to get involved. I just thought it was such a fun idea. I'm also nervous and it's partially because more than anything else and things like the discussion boards things like this i'm going to be able to see people's reactions as they go through and you know it's one thing for to get that at the end of the novel just to get that at every section through as a writer is both exhilarating and terrifying i think the extra content's really cool um it's been i'm i'm doing a few different pieces for it i'm doing uh, some things which are about some of the themes in the novels, uh, in the novel, and some of the influences behind it as well. But there's also what's been really, really cool is seeing things like the photographs that have been put out as part of the no as of the novel. Uh, we've got the ten stave images, which were done by Charles Moriarty, uh, who's this incredibly talented photographer. And it's also been really cool seeing the Twitter feed, which was put together, which was kind of weird for me because Jason's already dead at the start point of the novel. You start piecing together the things that he's done, but he's never kind of been alive for me in the way that the other characters are because you're piecing together him from his death. And so seeing this Twitter feed put together um, has just been so cool. And it's been using all the different things from the novel, and there are one or two clues for some upcoming things in there as well, hidden in a way in there. That's, it's been incredibly cool. I think we've got it set up for the 10th of December. Uh, we're going to be here in the bookshop, uh, which is a great event space. They do stuff here on a regular basis. They do author Q&As, we do a live comedy night here, and various things like that. So uh, it's basically, ideally, it's going to be a little bit of a party. It's going to be a little bit of fun. Uh, we're going to get people in. I'll waffle on about the novel a little bit, take questions about it, have people try and hit me for the things that I do in week eight and nine, and uh, just take it from there. I think it's, it's, going to, it's hopefully going to be a lot of fun.